J-Star's Victory Versus is the game that all anime-loving gamers have been dreaming of. It puts together 52 characters from 32 different Shonen Jump series and has them doing battle with one another in a game that is filled to the brim with fan service. Maybe not fan service in the way you might think, but it has a lot of unique combos and attacks from each character that would make any fanboy drool in awe and excitement. The game uses a battle system that is not normally seen in many American fighting games, but can be compared to some games such as Dragon Ball Z, Zenkai Battle Royale, and other Japanese arcade fighting games that sport a 3D environment to roam around in while doing battle. In fact, a lot of inspiration for Victory Versus art style and fighting mechanics can be closely compared with Zenkai Battle Royale as they are both published by Namco Bandai Games. Victory Versus has a story mode that uniquely has multiple characters from series such as Hunter x Hunter, Bleach, Naruto, Toriko, and One Piece teaming up to take place in a tournament that takes place every 45 years. Seems pretty convenient with the game being made for the 45th anniversary of Weekly Jump, right? Most of the story mode has you piloting a ship across a map to different locations from each Shonen Jump series. After getting to each location, you either start on a mission that has you traveling to another location, or you automatically get thrown into a battle with another group of fighters. Now, here is the part where the game starts to go downhill. If you're a player that does not understand Japanese, and the story mode is full of Japanese that you will not be able to read or understand. Piled on top of that is the fact that the story mode itself is completely and utterly irrelevant even if you can read everything that the character is saying. Most of the text is conversations that the characters hold with one another. Each one can have its own bit of comedy, but that comedy is thrown out of the window if you can't even understand what anyone is saying. Basically, you can skip each and every section of dialogue because you most likely wouldn't understand it in the first place. Next, you guys have to pay attention to this part of the review. Seriously, it can be a bit of a deal breaker for anyone that's unsure about dropping $70 to import this thing. When you start off in the game, you only have a small amount of the available characters unlocked. In order to unlock more of them, you need to collect J points and spend them in the shop to buy each playable character and support characters you don't already have. Let me tell you how much of a bore it is to unlock these guys. Each playable character costs 2,500 J points to unlock, and each support character costs 2,000. And the easiest way to get these J points is by playing through the story mode. Yes, the boring and repetitive story mode that has you traveling on a slow moving ship through a map going back and forth. The worst part about it is how much time it would take you to unlock these characters and get the J points you need to get everyone. I've played through the story mode alone for about 10 hours so far, and I've just barely unlocked all the playable characters. Not to mention that I still have around 12 support characters left to unlock. It is such a struggle, just sitting there and watching this slow moving ship travel across the map over and over and over again, and skipping each bit of character dialogue just to play through the same monotonous battles again and again and again so you can unlock the next few characters. It's a hassle, and it takes a bit of time and patience before you can even have the full roster available. But I think I've said enough about the more boring and tedious parts of the game. What anyone should really be buying this game for is the battles that take place. After unlocking your favorite characters, setting up your dream teams, and testing out each person's moveset and special attacks, the real fun part of the game starts to poke its head out and hit you in the face like a Kamehameha wave of overpowered goodness. Seeing the moves each character has and testing out the multiple combos and latent abilities is where I draw the most fun from this game. And what makes it even more fun is when I can battle head to head with a few friends and see how my Suna matches up with their Gintoki or how it really does against Madara. It's that fun factor of the game that makes it all worthwhile. It's the kind of game we've all wanted and prayed for, so we can really see how a matchup against the biggest names in anime would turn out. For the $70 that this game usually costs, it's a hefty price that may be worth it for some, but for others it may fall very far from being what they wanted in a game such as this. Personally, I have fun with this game. Both the downsides of it are still clearly felt while struggling through the story mode and multiple battles that can become the same strategy time after time. I give this game an honest rating of 5 out of 10. It was great for the fan service and a good game to play with my anime loving friends. But it's not the best fighting game out there, and it isn't much more after the flashy moves and epic battles are all over. Thank you guys for watching this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe. For now, this is me next to Little Taku saying stay gold and I'll see you guys later.